We're going to re-release this video because it has great content. You may have seen it before, but we had to take it down because of some music licensing issues now that we are monetized. So I hope you enjoy this video. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything to the original parts of this beautiful Empire chest. It's the Empire dresser and you've asked about it and we're going to see what we can do with it. I believe under all of this old varnish, it has a flame veneer on it, but it also has a lot of problems. We've got a lot of missing veneer on the front. We have pretty serious cracks, holes where there was obviously a post and probably a mirror. And when you look at these, they are disattached and they move. This one is just really bad. We've got drawers that are chipped here, veneer missing here. Yeah, it's got a lot of problems. It's got good bones, but it's got issues. So we're gonna see what we can do with it. All right, as usual, one of the first things we're gonna do is go ahead and give it a good clean first. As usual, we're going to get the pins out of it. There's a pin there. And safety pins here. Again, I ask why do all the drawers in all the pieces I do have pins in them? Okay. Okay, so we've removed the drawers on this piece and we've laid it down on its back to kind of get a better, a better view of what's going on with it. So we've got these corbel things that um, they have come out. They need to be cleaned off and re-glued and we will do that. Um, the bottom foot here is very, very wobbly. Um, not sure whether it'll come off. I mean, it will come off and I will get it off, but it might just wiggle off. And if so, we'll go ahead and do that. And that uh, might take a bit more of a gentle persuasion. Um, but down here on the feet, these feet have been well, well abused. Bless them. Um, we're missing a lot of veneer here. It's been drug about. It's had a bit of a rough life. As you can see, the top is just planked together. Probably tongue and groove, I would assume. Um, with a veneer over the top. Got a lot of chips at the lower parts. Again, a lot of veneer missing. Um, and then a big piece of veneer missing here. And it's lifting. And then we've got this corbel. Um, and it's gonna wanna come out as well. Nice and gentle, because we've got veneer up there that wants to lift. Don't want to chip any off that we don't have to. But yeah, that's a bit closer look at what's going on with this piece. We can go ahead and start cleaning it up um, with some denatured alcohol. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove a lot of the old varnish but it will leave the stain and then we can go from there and see it's hard to tell from dirt um, what's old varnish what's dirt and so we're just going to give it a clean up and see what's going on with it we can always put new shellac on it if that's all that it needs, but I have a feeling it's gonna need a lot more than that. But this will take off the old shellac, but leave the color and it'll help to reveal what's underneath here. All right, you can see here where we have missing veneer here, but the stain is the same color, so I can't say for sure, but 
I think this may not be the original stain, but it probably was very, very similar, even if it isn't the original stain. And again, we're just taking off just basically the shellac so that we can see what's going on and um, see what needs to be reattached, what's dirt, what's not and get a good feel for what color and whether it does have that flame veneer but i think i can safely say looking at this that it does just look at that pattern isn't that pretty oh isn't it beautiful all right, I'm going to keep doing this and let you see how it looks when I've gone over the whole piece. Okay, so we got everything um, stripped of its varnish and I've done a little bit of hand sanding on the top here. The top is not the same veneer that is on the drawers and the rest of the piece. I suspect that at some point this veneer may have been replaced or, or something because um, it would be unlikely that they would, I think, I'm not an expert on furniture, so um, I would assume that it has been replaced simply because I don't think that you would use an inferior veneer on something so visible. So I suspect that it's been replaced at some point. Um, so not sure what I'm gonna do about that but let's wipe it down and see what it looks like yeah not very pretty it has a lot of blemishes little dark marks in it here and of course we still have that huge crack in the back that's showing up like a sore thumb gonna have to do some pondering on this one and see what's the best way to go about making this piece acceptable. Um, the drawers though, oh my, the drawers came out just amazing. Let's go look at those. Just look at those. Look at that. Look at that grain pattern. Is that not just amazing? Now they've been cleaned. They've not been sanded or anything. They've, they don't have any varnish on them. This is just basically the stripped stripped down wood but yeah the grain pattern is just stunning especially that top drawer um the rest of them look nice but that top is just that's just gonna pop so nicely so we've made a beginning now that we have everything stripped down what I have discovered is that this top is not the original top. Um, this top is a replacement top. I don't know why it was replaced. Obviously, it's been quite some time because it has quite a bit of wear on it as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some veneer from here. Um, fill these edges of the replacement top in with Bondo where it where the two pieces join here and use these pieces for some veneer repairs um, 
That way, if anybody should ever want to take this piece and restore it back to its original condition, should they find the top piece that goes on it and so forth, then they could still do that. Since this is a repair or replacement top, I'm not doing any damage to the original piece. And that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna fill these big holes and paint this top. May not be what some people would do, but that's what I'm gonna do. I am not going to spend the money to take this and restore it. I am not doing a restoration on this, I'm doing a renovation on this. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to take these veneer pieces off. Um, they're obviously not original either, but they are a close enough match to the wood grain that I think I could do the small repairs that are needed without it being too noticeable. This is just an edge banding. Um, I'm not really that versed on species of wood, but probably cherry. Now I'm just going to take a scraper and clean that off good. So we've got our veneer saved and we'll make the repairs needed later. These were the knobs that I had taken off. Don't think y'all got a chance to see them, but that's how they go on. And they probably were the original hardware, but we will be putting those back on. There's some slight pieces missing off of them, but that's okay. I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of Bondo for that front edge to make it all nice and smooth. And go ahead and get it on the piece. I know that in some places these are quite sought after and hard to come by, but um, being in the part of North Carolina that I am in, um, we are about 10 minutes away from what used to be considered the furniture capital of the U.S. So furniture pieces like this are quite plentiful. Um, you can find them pretty much everywhere around here. And so they're not that expensive here. You can get one that's relatively nice. It needs no, no repair work for $350-$400. Therefore, I do not want to put a great deal of money into this by buying a exotic wood veneer to put back on the top or um, an exotic wood to put back on the top. So anyone who's wondering why I didn't just put a veneer on it, that would be why is that um, to get the money back out of it, it would have never happened in this part of the country. And I think that putting a cheap veneer on it is, you know, not, not a good option because as I say, it's a replacement top. If someone wanted to go back, buy this piece and restore it, they would have to do nothing but replace the top and it would be just like it was. So I've gone ahead and filled the holes on the top as well. It will still be restorable to someone. And um, if they wanted to go back at a later date and do that, then I applaud them, but it's not gonna be me. So if this is something that you end up with at your house where you have a piece and you research it and you find out that everything on it is original, then you know, you have to make that decision for yourself what you're going to do with that piece, whether you're going to restore it or whether you're going to paint it. But this is what I'm doing with my piece. When I went to wipe this one down, I noticed that 
I had missed a repair. Right here, we're missing a little, little piece of edge banding that goes on this drawer. So it's got a lot of glue residue here. So I'm just gonna remove that and then we'll make that repair and let it dry and then come back to it to um, give it its shellac. I'm just gonna scrape that off. And because we kept all of the pieces of that edge banding that we took off earlier, we've got a way to repair this with the same wood that came off of it, which is fantastic. So there'll be no, no chance that it won't match up. So that's pretty amazing. Okay. Just gonna, again, remove the glue off the back of this piece. All right, so we'll just put that on and that'll match pretty well. I'm just using tie blind to put this on and then we will get our little tape in there all situated nice and tight. I think that'll be okay. Put that over it. I've got tape on both sides of this taping block as well and then that will help to hold everything down flat. That should hold it down flat and let it dry. So we'll just set this one aside now. While we're waiting on the Bondo to dry, we're going to come over to the drawers and we're going to start looking at some of the repairs that need to be made on these drawers um, as far as the veneer repairs. Um, if you'll remember, I reclaimed a lot of the um, edge banding pieces. The problem with that is that you really need to match up the grain patterns as best you can. The color would be okay, except that my green patterns on the veneer or the edge banding are going this direction and the green patterns on my drawers are going this direction. And if it was a smaller repair, then I'd be good to go with a piece like this. But if I used a piece like this, I've still got a little raw edge here. so. I'm gonna have to find a different veneer to repair that with. All right, I brought out some more pieces. Um, these are pieces that I reclaimed off of a um, Duncan Fife table a few months ago. It was an antique Duncan Fife. Like I say, I reclaim almost all the old veneer because you just can't find it and you never know when you might need something like this. Oh, those match. That grain pattern matches up pretty well, so I think we might have found the winner here. I'd have to stain it um, to, to get to that color, but I think I could make that happen. Um, the problem is, is that this veneer is quite thick. You can see that it's quite thick, but this veneer is very thin. So I'm going to have to build up some layers here um, to get the to get to the top and make it all level. So I think we'll start there. It's all quite fiddly, but. I'd say worth it to try and save a piece from being painted if possible. I love to paint furniture, but I also love it when I can keep a piece as original as possible. So, okay, I think that's our level there. All right, so I'm going to take two pieces of the edge banding and glue them together. And then a piece of the veneer over that will get us to the level that we need to be at. And I've glued my pieces together and made them 
much thicker and they should match up height wise perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is just put some tape over that and this will help me to get um, the exact measurements that I need on that piece of veneer that I have just prepared. So I'm just gonna take a pencil and just run it across there and that'll give me my line. Okay, take that off. Make sure that my veneer orientation is correct. I think that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna put this on here. Get a little board and start cutting out. That matches up pretty good. Um, like I say, I am not a professional at restoration, but it's not bad. All right. But I think rather than using Tyvon, I think I'm going to get some epoxy mixed up and use epoxy to glue this down. I think it'll hold it better. Just going to put a little bit there. This is not water soluble, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we're sitting all nice and straight, and I think we'll be good to go. Okay, now that we've let our epoxy dry overnight, we're gonna go ahead and take this off and see how that veneer repair did. Hmm. Oh dear. There we go. Okay. All right. We are obviously stuck down very well. That's very good. Okay. So We've gotten the tape off and sanded just a bit there and I've taped off where we put the veneer on here and so I'm just going to go ahead and start getting it down flush. We'll just go nice and slow. Now we'll mix up a stain to match this color and then we'll blend it into there and I think it'll look pretty good. It's now that this has had time to dry, we're going to go ahead and remove the tape and take a look and see if everything's stuck the way that it should have. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. Now let's take the clamp off and see how this veneer repair is. Ah, perfect. Love it. Beautiful. Alrighty. Okay, this is a Minwax um, red mahogany stain, and what I've done is taken some denatured alcohol and thinned it. Alright, I think that's going to match well. Okay, we'll let that dry and see how that looks afterwards, but I think that's going to match quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. If you remember what we were really doing here is there was a line going straight through the middle where two pieces of wood had been pieced together. Um, so that's what we're sanding off here is just the Bondo and these edges are okay, but it's that line in there that I wanted to fill in. And looking at this, there's a a so big gouge here. I think I might go ahead and fill that too because if we're painting this top um, I don't want those showing up. If it were if it were the original top and we were just going to stain or keep the original finish then I would leave those divots because that shows age 
and character but since this is a replacement top and we're going to paint it anyhow I think I will go ahead and fill those and try and get this top pretty smooth now that our bondo is dried we're going to go ahead and give this a sand I think that'll be the last sand that we need so yeah that's feeling pretty good now and it's ready the top is ready for prime and paint the the devaluing of an antique piece has already been done by whomever replaced the original top and removed whatever would have been back here on the very back since it wasn't there i don't know what it was i would assume that it was probably a mirror um but i i would have no idea what height since i did not see the piece originally please if anyone knows what was on the top comment down below and um, tell us what you think it was i would be i would i would have loved to have seen it in its original form i bet it was absolutely stunning because the drawers are going to be amazing they came out so pretty gonna use my very favorite primer one that has never ever let me down you always want to stir it very well you can spray it you can roll it you can brush it but i have never had success brushing it but and if you brush it the problem is as it is not a water-based primer you're gonna have to throw away your brush afterwards and i don't really I don't like throwing away brushes um, and what I do with these rollers is I put them in a little plastic baggie and I can usually keep them a couple of days I put them I've got a fridge down here and so I just pop them in the fridge in the little Ziploc bag and I get a couple of days use out of them because I've always got something that I'm priming with this Okay, what I've done is I've taken the bullseye shellac that you can buy um, in the hardware store and I have thinned it down with some denatured alcohol. And then I've gotten cheesecloth and I've just wrapped up an old cotton t-shirt with cheesecloth. And I keep this around use it over and over and over again until I have to make another one and just make it kind of a little ball and then take my my shellac that's been thinned down to probably about a one pound cut this is how I do it I am not a restoration expert by any stretch of the imagination don't claim to be but this is what i do and i just wipe it on nice and thin and then let it dry go back and do more coats sanding in between each coat just a light sanding to take out any dust particles or trash that might have been in there so and you can tell this is going to be magnificent just wow just look at that wood grain it would be criminal to to cover that
now that we've got a couple of coats on, um, we're just going to get a thousand grit sandpaper and give these a really nice feel. And we'll put a final coat on a very, very thin final coat and they will feel, oh, butter soft. I mean, I wish that the, that you could run your hand across this because it is amazing. I mean, they just feel so, so soft. And with all of the old shellac off, I mean, just look at that green pattern. It is just stunning. Okay, now that we've got the primer on and it's all dry, I'm going to put the first coat of black on here. I am going to paint the top. As I said, the top is a replacement top. It's not going to take away from the beauty of the piece. Anybody who wanted to later on could go through, pull this top off and put something on that's more appropriate. And what I'm gonna do now for the final finish is I'm gonna go over it with some four aught steel wool and take away any, any burrs or anything that's left in that final coat, which there shouldn't be because we've We've sanded in between every coat of shellac. So just gonna do that. And this will be a beautiful, beautiful feel when it's done. It's gonna feel so good. And we're just just rubbing over it, not with any real pressure. Um, just giving it just just a little going over. And a clean rag. And I'll wipe it down. Oh, that feels lovely. You can see how how smooth that is. If it were a bar glass, it'd just slide off the end. That'd be a mess. Oops, nope. Okay, and now we're gonna just take some wax and we're just gonna give it a little little wax finish. This is one that I I use quite often if it's you know just needs a, a little bit of wax or the wood's a bit dry. Um, I'll use this, this Howard's weed and feed and wax. Well, oh, been in the garden too much this week. So I'm just gonna do that. And it just leaves a beautiful sheen to it okay what we're doing here is i have already got glue on the pegs that are in here and i've got it in the holes on the top and the bottom and we're just putting these corbels back in place i think they're called corbels that's what we're going to call them anyway these things so we're just going to got them all lined up Oh, it looks just beautiful. Just beautiful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up these drawers. They've been cleaned, but they still, they're still quite dry. Um, and I don't want to stain them or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them a coat of shellac on the inside. And then that'll give them a nice fresh look. They'll be nice and clean. And when clothes go in there there'll be no chance of transfer from anything that was in there previously I don't want to take all of the scars and marks out of these drawers I think that that shows the history so we're going to leave those see that just looks nice and tidy Nice and clean, fresh. 
Okay, so we got the black all painted on this piece, and it looks pretty good. Um, got to do a top coat, but I think it's going to look nice. So I've got it in the paint room already to tape it up and do its final coat. So we got the shellac off of the, the old shellac off of the knobs. And what I'm doing now is just putting new shellac on them. And necessity is the mother of invention because I didn't have anywhere to put these to dry. So I've had to use the fan as my holder. So hopefully they don't get dirty. I'm not turning the fan on. All right, we'll just let those dry and then we can get them back on the piece. So here we are with the Empire chest that I promised that I would do and it is finished and looking absolutely gorgeous. This piece was not fully restored. I have left a lot of imperfections but it is a far cry from the piece that we started out with. We've done veneer repairs here, here, and on the feet. We also um, glued some veneer down that had lifted a bit. And we took all of the old shellac off of it. I've put new shellac on it. And that's all that we've done to the finish of this. It looks fabulous. The grain pattern on this is absolutely stunning. The top was a replacement top and all we've done is paint that. If anyone wanted to go back and put a top on that was more in keeping with the original that would have been on here, they could remove this top easily and replace it. Um, I think it was a, a good outcome and I'm very pleased with this piece. I absolutely adore it and it's going to be really hard for me to let it go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found anything in it helpful, please remember to hit the like button and to see our future videos, hit subscribe and hope to see you again.